What's up, Ginger? Hello. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the theme. We're going to talk about the new X-Men. Yeah. The new X-Men apocalypse. And um, not really a movie review. Right. Right. But just talk about some of the um, major themes that you can probably take from it. You know, first off, first full disclosure, it's a badass fucking movie. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, a badass movie. But um, <clears throat> I guess we can try to keep this talk um, uh, without revealing too many spoilers. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So without revealing too many spoilers, because um, who knows? Maybe people might listen to this and then they're like, oh, fuck, I don't want a spoiler alert. Right. So maybe we can just start off from the beginning and say everything we talk about right now right is going to be hence a spoiler alert of everything that um uh we saw in x-men apocalypse that's a good point yeah right yeah <laughs> like oh didn't think about it so now that we've given the spoiler alert we can go ahead and rock out full disclosure yeah with this so the one thing that i guess i want to talk about uh or maybe we can talk about is the uh um that was me rolling my eyes. The master slave, <laughs> the, the master slave dialect, whatever mm -hmm. the fuck that means, right? You know, but just the relationship that you would see between the 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 mutants and the humans, or even the mutants versus the mutants. Yeah, that's yeah. where I saw it. Yeah, is that where you both, saw it? Both, both. Okay. Mm. Oh man, yeah, this is gonna be fun drinking wine and talking about. Fucking X Men. As you do. <laughs> As you do. Okay, so what are some of the lessons learned from this particular story, from this hero's journey that you came away with? Just just like that. Just yeah. start out. Yeah, yeah. We, so, can just, we can just crush it. <laughs> so, just keeping with the master slave, the way I like to think of that in my mind as I was thinking about the movie is power differential. Ah. So, everything is breaking down into. Do characters have equal power, uh -huh. uh, or is there a power differential? So okay. the power differential would be a master and a slave. Yeah. And then power equality, there's not really a name for that, because if you call something a master, it has to be master of something, right? So you can either have two masters, two, but I don't know what we call that, so we'll just call that mm. uh, equal, equal citizens or equal mm. mutants or... Okay, so also, remember... Because we we're, we're we're basically stealing this from uh, Hegel Hegel's master yeah, slave dialect yeah his master slave dialect that, which is too fucking wordy blah 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 whatever but you know you can sort of kind of see this theme throughout um, all sorts of stories right you know so basically I guess you can say two two major themes are always gonna to are always gonna arise from this master slave dialect the first one is what occurs in the mind in the human mind also occurs outside right basically we create whatever it is that we think about okay mm -hmm. so this is this is one of the ones or one of the themes if you want to say that um was going on through the movie that just kept like reoccurring in my mind mm -hmm. and then the second one is that the products that we create are also reflective of how we've mastered these specific areas right so now you can Go ahead and, and look at the characters that you were talking about, mm -hmm. and then which who who were the major characters um, in this film that you enjoyed the most? Because I know I drilled down mine just a few because there's so many in there. I like for different reasons. Um, yeah. So I started looking at each of the characters as a metaphor. Mm -hmm. So just to back up, like this is these are all stories about. <laughs> How they're, they're life lessons, right? Mm -hmm. Stanley is writing a hero's journey for the modern day using these powers and these people and these characters as metaphors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, what is it? Cyclops? Yeah, Cyclops. So he's got this, he's got, he sets up the good and the bad fork in the road, right? You can use your powers for good or you can use your powers for bad. And... So Cyclops is his power is uncontrolled rage basically. He's not mad, but the the the, the fire beams, right? The laser beams, whatever that shoot out of his eyes, that can be a 
metaphor for rage. So if you take the good guy fork in the road, you can harness that into focus and passion and um, do amazing things with it, right? Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> Focused, unfocused rage. Scott Summers. Yeah. Also yeah. known as Cyclops. And so there's also a big uh, metaphor with hiding one's identity and shame and... <laughs> shame. <laughs> yeah, yeah like so that. you have um, uh, Mystique and you have the Beast, and they both don't really want to be who they really are. But once they go through their transformation, then they embrace who they are, and it actually makes them a stronger character. It makes them able to do what they need to do to... That's kind of crazy that people were hiding. Like, mm -hmm. essentially hiding hiding themselves from the rest of the world just so they can function within the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't want to walk around as this blue beast mm -hmm. or this blue hot chick that's mm -hmm. basically naked, but you can't never see the nip with the JJ, right? right? But then you and can always... look with the text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so then they're just walking through life. Like, what did you say? Mm -hmm. um, not really fully embracing who they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. And it weakens them at first, right? Because yeah. they're compromised. And then once they're accepting of their own identity, then it makes them stronger. And then there is the... Um, the vein of uh, vulnerability. So Magneto builds up this magnetic force around him to keep <laughs> everything out when uh -huh. he's hurt, right? Uh -huh. He got, he let people in, they got killed, and he got um, hurt about that, so he was ripe for the picking for uh, Apocalypse. Right. right? <laughs> and so he's the only one that Apocalypse didn't want to manipulate, and the reason why according to, to what I'm about to say, is um, because he knew that once he would unleash his power, it was also power of alienation. He repels things. Hmm, that's what you think of the magnetic spectrum. No, I, I'm talking about the point in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. he's like the only one out of all the, the mutants he picked for the, his four horsemen where yeah. he didn't enhance. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. No, he did enhance him. Did he? Yeah, 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 he did. Because it was when he when he made him touch the ground mm -hmm. and the earth. And then he basically... I thought he just kind of... Mm, nah, kind of encouraged that. Yeah, well, yeah, you could say that. But that was... It, it's still a form of enhancement. Because he was like, oh, here's a new, a new outlook, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. never really thought about this. Mm -hmm. But everything within the planet, you know, okay. has elements to it. So okay. he just said, here... Touch this. But the theme is still the same about yeah. the vulnerability and then alienation. And so then there's the other theme about alone versus community and stronger with community. And that brings me full circle into the power equality versus inequality. Yeah. Once everyone is equal power as a community, then they thrive. Right. Right. Um, you know, I'm going to piggyback on that one because that's one of mine, one of mine too. But it... I, I'm going to maybe not be, um, it's not going to sound the same as yours, yeah. but what I was looking at with this specific theme was peer-to-peer, P2P, right? And how P2P, mm -hmm. communication and technology is much stronger than this individual, isolated, controlled type, um, right. yeah, type structure, right? So then if you have P2P, which means that we can all link up, which you can go on another, uh, another one, which maybe that'll come up later. Or fuck yeah, it, yeah, it can yeah, come yeah, up yeah. now. Because that's the one. Yeah. yeah, because I'm leading into um, Charles, you uh -huh. know, Charles yeah, 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 Xavier, yeah, yeah. right? Because Magneto and Charles, to me, <laughs> yeah. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. on page two. For yeah, <laughs> yeah, because Magneto and Charles are linked, right? You know, but but they're, they're, they're both um, mm, um, parts of the same, right? You know, because they both have power and they have ability mm -hmm. through connecting right mm -hmm. um but one of them sees the good and all and then one of them has only experienced the bad and all right. right so magneto has always experienced the negative and the bad again the yeah. fork in the road mm -hmm. yeah charles the good guys and the bad guys but no but charles has also seen the same thing yeah. you know so it's like yeah he he's always seen um bad things happen right but then he's always expecting the good from people because and this is what his power or there's a couple, there's two of them, right? Um, is that they actually are able to 
empathize with people. But, you know, because Charles, and now here's another one, Link, right? You know, so Charles and Jean, yeah, Charles and Jean both have, you know, the same abilities, <laughs> in my opinion, as far as, you know, like having, having these specific mutant powers, um, is that they are able to connect with everyone. Mm -hmm. And because they can connect with everyone, they can also manipulate people's minds. So, so I wrote empathy, connection, communicate, network, influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Empathy, connecting, communication, mm -hmm. bringing together, and then you can influence, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so this, this whole theme, it's been going on throughout the whole, the whole show, right? Because um, you were talking about Magneto, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then they all sort of kind of have these same fucking issues, mm -hmm. right? So the ones that I was looking at were the same, mm -hmm. right? You have Apocalypse, right? Mm -hmm. Who Apocalypse represents the old world. Right, um, <laughs> and then you'd have Charles Xavier, right, who represents the new world, mm -hmm. right, and then you have, um, and then you have Magneto, and um, um, Mystique or Raven, mm -hmm. right, and they represent the present world, mm -hmm. right, and then you'd have Jean Grey, mm -hmm. right. So these are the only five characters that I was like mm -hmm. delving into because these were the most you mm -hmm. know influential to me. She represent the future world or the unknown world. Right, but untapped power. Mm -hmm. So, so then I was just going off of that, and then you know, that just reminded me of all sorts of um, historical events, right? Because you remember the opening, the opening uh, montage was just the, um, the the tunnel. You can say that it was mm -hmm. going through as you saw history mm -hmm. being explained through imagery. Mm -hmm. You know, like what did you think about that? You know, do you remember the opening sequence to? Yeah, the film? I was telling you they yeah. were using all these uh, symbols. That were not only uh, distinction distinctive of a certain time, so they were they were telling the story of going through time, but they were symbols that were somewhat emotionally charged, like swastikas and. Mm -hmm. um, I can only remember fucking three, right? There's the White House. I didn't even remember that yeah. one. Yeah. There is. Uh, what was the one you mentioned? Here are the three that I saw. Right. I saw. Um, Jesus carrying the cross, there you go. Yeah. right? Yeah. I saw the railroad or the train, mm -hmm. right? And then I saw the swastika. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I sort of kind of like tuned out because mm -hmm. I was thinking about all the things that were transpiring between each of these moments that right. you can say that they were representing. Um, and in the last, I didn't see anything. But else. they were also representative of power. Mm, yeah, you can say you have religious yeah. power, you have mm -hmm. military power, you mm -hmm. have economic power. Yeah, and these are the powers. Wait, which one was we, the economic power? Uh, I think at one point there was a uh, like a government. Uh, was it the, not the, was, it, was it like a dollar bill or a Ew. White House? Or I don't know. Like yeah. No, because yeah. I, I missed. I missed. I remember yeah. thinking it was either like a, a government building or a yeah a, something that represented yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah the Fed America yeah America it was a, a, yeah yeah. 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 Before we were great. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Donald Trump. Oh, fucker. Go. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, you were seeing those, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I sort of kind of, I didn't see any of the, um, the, the American. Mm -hmm. uh, Bert, alcohol. Yeah. I didn't see the American mm -hmm. one, but yeah, that sort of kind of makes a lot of sense too, because that's like the dying. And we're not really dying. Right, but that's the the stage that we're in right now, as far as empire is concerned, and and all of these all of these different moments have led up to this this moment that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Well, well, the 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 new society, the culture, the idea that that I um, I'm getting at with the power equality. I mean, we're not there yet, obviously, but that's the idea. What? What that's do you mean? Ideal. E equal power. Equal power between who? For everyone. I mean, look at what we're what we're watching on TV about um, well, the the Black Lives Matter and the protests, the feminism movements. Everyone's talking about a wrong group versus uh, a group that's they feel is more misogynistic or or taking advantage, or... There's inequality. People are upset about inequality. Whether well, there's it's always perceived inequality. Or, right, right, right. So yeah. I said, we're not there yet. But that was the that's an ideal when... when of all equality? Right, next. No, don't say <laughs> next. <laughs> no, no. I'll come around again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, because now um, I'm thinking about inequality, mm -hmm. equality. 
because it never, never really is equality in this film, right? Or did you see some forms of equality in the film? Mm. Go on to it, because <laughs> now I'm going to lose my train of thought. Okay, okay, okay. So... What I, and I'm going to go back to how the X-Men represent, they represent the new world, right? I would like to talk about the new world because the new world is about peer-to-peer, peer-to-peer connections, you know, peer-to-peer mm -hmm. since you were talking about equality, but everybody having the ability to share and communicate amongst each other. That's where I was going. Yeah. It's a strength together. Uh, yeah, you know, but now, now because you... You, you were talking about the BLM, the Black Sli the Black Lives Matter, and the, the, the yeah, the the <laughs> feminists, right? Um, uh, because they're not talking about like strengthening, you know, in strength together. They're talking about being dividing. You right, know? right. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that yeah. that's the goal. Yeah, I'm saying that's the anti goal. Yes, 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 yes. I can I can see that because it's power together is what power together in what way? Being able to communicate. Because this is the major theme that I saw. So the theme where he says, you know why I'm going to win? Because I'm not alone. Yeah. And so that was the community. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. Okay. community you have to tell is me. not a master slave. So who said, who said that? Because we need did. names. So Charles said this, yes. right? Yes. When, he's, when he's getting his ass handed to him by, right. yeah, Apocalypse. So right. Apocalypse was basically, you know, he turned into this massive being, right? He got super large. Why? Because mentally, you know, this is all mental now. Mm -hmm. he, 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 was, he was bigger than Charles can handle, right? So Charles was this little, well, Charles ended up becoming this little small creature mm -hmm. in in comparison to Apocalypse. So mm -hmm. Apocalypse just said, you can't stop me. Okay, his voice didn't really sound like that. But <laughs> but he was basically saying, bitch, you can't stop me, mm -hmm. right? You know, and then he just kept smashing Charles, mm -hmm. right? So Charles was all on the floor, right, in his mind, mm -hmm. which is so fun because you talk about the things that you know we think about we create so um this this monster if you want to call him that this monster that was part of the old world was just crushing charles he was crushing the new world right so the old world was crushing the new world go no 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 keep going oh. that's that's the new world that i the new idea is that everyone works together he came from a time where there was the master the slave the power differential the haves and the have nots the might makes right mm -hmm. Right? No, he created that. Who's he? Apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he comes. And Xavier's still like, but I know I'm going to win and this is why. Yeah. And Stan Lee is saying, this is the kind of culture we need to be having. Uh huh. A culture where people are working together. Yes, which you just so reminded there's me. No, there's no master slave issue. There's no um, the, the mighty protect the weak. It's we're all contributing together. We're all yeah in a web together. Yeah, we yeah. all have we're strengths. Networked. We're all and those strengths networked are synergistic. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, rather yeah. than just having one and then the weak. Right. So it makes me think of the democracy now too. Yeah, because now mm -hmm. I'm thinking about Noam Chomsky and the and his whole his whole um, um, shtick with the the crisis of democracy. Okay. Right, and how he was actually talking about that because you can see all these metaphors and how they're linked. Mm -hmm. they're, they're actually stories that you can learn from, mm -hmm. right? So if you think about what is the crisis of democracy, right? So the crisis of democracy come from those who are in power, right? So Apocalypse, mm -hmm. this guy is the one who's running shit. He's like, ah, you guys, you know, you can't, you can't do anything because I have all this power and I will grant those few, you know, that want. To, to be my four horsemen, right? Mm -hmm. I will grant them the power so they can destroy and do all of these things too. But all in all, everybody's going to listen to me, right? Yeah, then he, the, they're never as strong as he is, mm, right? Yes, yes, yes. But, but then I was talking about like the crisis of democracy, mm -hmm. right? So the crisis of democracy is from um, apocalypse perspective is mm -hmm. when all the people, all the humans, right? All the humans and all the other mutants that are saying that, Ah, I don't really want to fuck with you, right? When they all work together, right? Because mm -hmm. this is the this is the 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 part where he took all of their weapons, mm -hmm. right? You know, all the humans' major weapons, and he shot them up, all the nuclear weapons, and he shot them up into space, right? Disarmed. Yeah, yeah. So then he took all their power, their perceived power, right? His perceived 
his perception of what their perceived power is, and then he, he got rid of it, right? But then, essentially, their perceived power, or their real power, is their mind, and their mind to actually create things that can level up and combat whatever it is that they mm -hmm. keep running across. Because mm -hmm. you remember that one group that flew in on the helicopter? Um, this is after, after Apocalypse, like, blew up. He, he blew up mm -hmm. um, the school. And then uh, now the humans mm -hmm. or the military mm -hmm. came through, and mm -hmm. then they were able to disarm the mutants, right? Because they had weapons. So they had technology that they were able to create with their minds that disarmed these other people who had these abilities, right? Mm -hmm. That was the human power, but also the peer-to-peer -peer power that you can say the people collectively have. You're staring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? I saw it as his, he was disarming the threat. And the, the threat, what did I write? <laughs> it said the new gods, the military. Um, I don't know where I put religion, but that wasn't really in the movie. Um, but I was thinking of protectors of the weak. And there's, there's this theme about him like despising the weak or needing to eradicate the weak. Who, Apocalypse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he felt that everybody, mm -hmm. all humans, he felt that they were all weak. Mm -hmm. And they should listen to him, right? Which was like that major theme that he kept having. It's well, like well, in Egypt, you had the gods, right? You had the uh, the Osiris and Ibis and Ra, and and then you had these humans that were just basically these servants, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's huge power differential. I mean, mm -hmm. that's as power differential as you can get. And then water it down a little bit. So now we have the ser the, the the weak which is the people that need to be protected by governments and, and uh, military. That was a heavy theme. That was a heavy yeah. theme. That, that, mm -hmm. that sequence, I know what you're talking about yeah. right now. Yeah. When, like you saw the Egyptians bowing down, and then they were all bowing down to, to mm -hmm. Apocalypse and whatever his fucking name was in the, in the mm -hmm. film, being mm -hmm. carried on, the, mm -hmm. on his um, chariot by people, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. then they were all just like, oh, mm -hmm. chanting, whatever that mm -hmm. chant was. Mm -hmm. That's the fucking world we live in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and so he just did a one up and said, "All those that pro what protects those people, I'm gonna knock that out." So he knocked out the military mm -hmm. just effortlessly because mm -hmm. he wanted to reinstate that power differential. Yeah, but think about that. He did it effortlessly, but he still had to connect with others in order to do it because he didn't have that specific power because he was coming from an old world. Right. where people didn't have this communication technology. And this is why I always say that the internet is so powerful, right? Because mm -hmm. Charles, empath, they represent the internet, right? So they're able, he's like, oh, I can connect to he's all. He's a white hat. Huh? <laughs> Charles, is, or no, Xavier, he's a white yeah, hat. Yeah, she, she's like, well, okay, she's saying white hat, but she's, <laughs> she's leaving out the most part. She's hacker. saying a white hat hacker. Meaning that people who do things on the internet for good, right? So they understand systems and they understand how to break down systems and manipulate systems. And um, they actually help reinforce and build up these systems. An apocalypse. Apocalypse. Black hat. He could be a hat. black hat. A black hat. Yeah, it's hard to say, uh -huh. right? Especially after some drinks. A black hat Black hat hacker. hacker. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he was able to infiltrate mm -hmm. these systems through social engineering, social engineering, because that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. People are always the weakest link, right? So through mm -hmm. social engineering, he was actually able to get in these networks and influence and um, and just deploy his, his malicious code, right? And his malicious code was his way of thinking to where right. I'm going to rule you all or I'm going to take over all of your computers, right? Or I'm, mm -hmm. going, to, I'm going to control your whole network and you will have to obey me mm. or die or lose your information <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that was that was a fun one yeah isn't it interesting how you see all these like now you see all these themes mm -hmm. and then they just like cross over from everything that it is that we do and then i think that that's the purpose of these stories right so so when i was looking at it i'm, I'm actually thinking about this is our Bible, right? These are these our times, yeah. Stories, mm -hmm. which are the same stories of Bibles or of 
um, old belief systems and things mm-hmm. like that because this is the old world. Mm-hmm. Um, damn, what did I write down about that? Yeah, this is what Apocalypse, he said this when he said no more. Right, he said no more and he said man's tools can be used to destroy old gods or systems of thinking. Well, he actually really didn't say that, but that's what he was inflecting. He was like, the tools that man has created are those of equal power to what I have, right? Meaning that he was an old god, right? But he is one system of thinking. And if you follow this system of thinking, Mm -hmm. right, then, you know, he will reward you and he'll do things like that. He'll allow you to live, blah, 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 whatever, right? But that was his system of thinking. But he's saying that man's tools, which go back to the master-slave um, dialect, you know, but the things that man creates, mm-hmm. his tools, which he creates with a mind, and his mind has to be free in order to create these tools, right, achieve the same level of power of, air quotes here, gods, right? That was some funky shit. So what it is that we think is on the same level of gods of the past. <laughs> I can fly. Meaning I can hop in an airplane and I can get from one place to the okay, next. Okay, the tools. Right, yeah, the tools. Everything that man has created, right? I can shoot I can shoot a missile, mm-hmm. right? And a missile is just nothing but an extension of man's teeth or man's fist. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right, you yeah, know, yeah, so, yeah. so now I say I can shoot a missile and I have the ability of a nuclear bomb to flatten the a city. The ability of death. Yeah, right? you know, Osiris. so. Osiris. Mm. <laughs> and this is what man, man has now. Mm-hmm. Because man has the has harnessed mm-hmm. nature, right? And then because man has been able to harness nature, he can manipulate it in all sorts of ways, right? And then this is the, the clash of the old world and the new world, which was just the main theme that I just yeah. kept seeing over yeah. Yeah. and over and over. And you can, well, in my mind, I can just like keep delving off into all the different, the different elements that you would see from that old world, new world thinking, um, you know, religious people versus secular people, um, business people versus co-op people. Um, uh, what is it? The, the transgender people Mm -hmm. versus, well, I'm back on religious people again, (laughs) you know? So it's like, basically it could be some form of religious or, well, it's all based on ideology, right? So all of this is all based off of ideology. And then, um, we were talking about this the other day where I was saying that now we have a new group of humans, mm-hmm. new groups of mutants, right? <laughs> and then the new mutants or the new humans now are all derivatives of homo religious. Here we go. <laughs> Bring it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homo religious. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> homo religious, where it's man's thinking, mm-hmm. you know, man's thinking or man's systems or frameworks of thinking. Uh-huh create awesome abilities right and it can be either good or they can be bad right you can take an ability of thinking one way Mm -hmm. and you can take a group of people off to some island Mm -hmm. you know or some land right let's just say like uh this place called jonestown right and you can take a bunch of humans over to jonestown and then they're all reading from one specific book and then from this book that they're reading they're thinking that oh shit when i die i'm going to go to this place Mm -hmm. right and this place is going to be heaven you Mm -hmm. know which heaven just means german in sky right you know or heaven is actually german for sky if you actually break down the etymological roots of heaven (laughs) yeah yeah because it's fun because it's like what the fuck does heaven mean right it just means sky which makes sense you look up in the sky and you say oh where do all the dead people go when they die and they go heaven but that's my whack-ass german accent (laughs) what does that mean (laughs) yeah it means sky (laughs) right and then you can go off from there and think about, well, why would they say that? It's probably because they had, like, some funeral where they burned them, like in Conan. <laughs> and the smoke rose yeah. up, and that's her spirit. And so yeah. they're up there in and the then sky, they say, and that must be heaven. Yeah, it's in heaven. And then now we're taking the same language, <laughs> and we're living in it in today's times. And then I forgot where I was going with this. Because <laughs> I, was, I was splitting off homo religious. That's what I was right, doing. Right, right, right. Yeah, homo religious, which is my new definition going to be on wikipedia of the now the time period that we live in now mm-hmm. where you have all these distinct groups of humans mm-hmm. right because we evolved <laughs> we've evolved which now we're still talking about x-men because it's all about evolution right so we've evolved from um homo neanderthal homo homo erectus um homo sapien 
you had Australopithecus, right? But now we are all a Homo sapiens sapiens because why? We fucked everybody else, you know, out, right? So mm -hmm. now we fucked all these other people out. So now Homo sapien is still crushing it through. But then even within Homo sapien sapien, you're going to have all these other different groups, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can have a group from Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, a group from the Middle East, a group from um, Asia, China, that big fucking place. Uh, a group from the Western countries, right? <laughs> and then they all have all these different ways of thinking, mm -hmm. right? And then from these different ways of thinking, they basically are all fucking mutants, right? So they all have abilities and they all have different abilities and then they're just like clashing. Yeah, that was a tie into the clash of civilizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, my brain's full. Because <laughs> this was the pattern that I just kept seeing over and over and over with all these different characters. It's just ways of thinking, group thinking, just bashing heads to, together. Old world, new world. That sounded like nude world. <laughs> hey, in the new world. Yeah, yeah, in the nude world. Yeah. What else? Silence. Look at I that. Know, I know, I know. Look <laughs> yeah. There. But that's what I like. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hijack it again. Yeah. Is it I kept seeing the power of the internet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whenever when when Charles that's, tapped that's into Xavier. Cerebro. Yeah. That's Cerebro. Yeah, but that's everyone. Yes. Yeah. He was just able to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody had all these special powers and these special abilities, and he saw all. I wonder what his next powers are going to be like. Oh, what'd you think about this? <laughs> um, this just popped in my head when um, when I was looking at it, because Charles has hair. He has this long, flowing, you know, English locks, you know, <laughs> that, that are just swinging all over the place because the fucker still has hair, right. right? And then Magneto taps hold of him, right? And then when Magneto taps hold of him, he also shows him that I can teach you to connect without Cerebro. Right, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he becomes bald. Wait, when Magneto or oh, I said Magneto. Apocalypse, yeah, yeah, Apocalypse. yeah, okay. yeah, that yeah. Makes more sense. yeah. So when Apocalypse linked up with Charles and was trying to take over Charles, right, right. and he was trying to transfer his consciousness into Charles's consciousness, mm -hmm. right? What happened to Charles? And this is what was it just was a fun little little um, thought experiment when Charles goes from having hair, having these long Jesus like locks, right, and to being a bald dude. Right. He's evolving. Yeah, but the bald dude reminded me of Buddha, right? In Buddhism, okay. right? Okay. <laughs> and, then say, and then saying that, oh, yeah, we're all connected, right? We're all connected because you have the Four Noble Truths and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. You can kick into there because that's a whole nother topic, a whole nother philosophy. But just as far as like, we're all connected, you know, we're all one, right? And then that's when you become the Buddha. So, the way of so, understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Charles became Buddha in the span of however long this, <laughs> this film was, right? He went from being Jesus to saying that, he yeah. He was Jesus. Yeah. We have to hit on that one. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Let's hit on it No, no, because no, you mentioned it in the movie. You're like, he's Jesus. Yeah, he was Jesus. He was meant to be sacrificed uh, or meant to be the savior or in what way? Uh, Wait, I got to go get some more wine. <laughs> Keep talking. Uh, okay. You were saying. I'm not pausing it. I'm I just know you're not keep pausing it, going. it. Yeah. I'm not gonna be nervous about it being on while I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. Well, who cares? <laughs> it can all be edited out, or maybe not, because the wine is pouring. Yeah. So Charles was sacrificed, but everybody had to be sacrifice to I guess a certain extent or everybody was sacrificing something to a certain extent because I guess you have to sacrifice things in to order evolve. for you to grow yes. yeah 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 because Magneto kept sacrificing his family right. the people he cared about why because people didn't under pick up understand his ability mm -hmm. or his power or they just thought he was different um, even though he was living amongst everyone, everyone in the community, right? He's hanging out. He's chilling. He saved a fucker's life, right? right? He saved a fucker's life with his power and his ability, and, and then that yet got his family killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the people turn on him. Yeah. I would be super upset too. Yeah, yeah, I would probably go dark. I would go dark. Yeah, for a hot second, 
Eh, maybe at least two movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two movies. Yeah, you can say two movies, so maybe about four hours. Because so then you get back, you get back to the isolation, uh, the uh, alone versus community, um, and that brings him back, right? What the community? Yeah, his uh, mystique and the people mm-hmm. that that cared about him were the one link back. Yeah, his, his new his his family. Quote unquote. Or his other or, family. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he lost his mother. He lost his father to the Germans, mm-hmm. Nazi Germany. Mm-hmm. You know when they they took him out, mm-hmm. right? He went through the concentration camps. He was actually branded, you know, because he's a Jewish dude, mm-hmm. and and then yet he he ends up his power ends up awakening during this time period. Mm-hmm. But now because he was formed in that specific environment, he's going to have a certain outlook mm-hmm. upon humanity, mm-hmm. right? So now if you get this badass power to where you can manipulate the magnetic fields, right? And then we know the magnetic fields are fucking everywhere. We know that now, but mm-hmm. he probably didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So he gets to learn mm-hmm. how he can essentially have this all, I don't know how to say it. All encompassing, yeah, basically godlike power to manipulate everything. Right. Yeah. Right. His power is very pervasive. Yeah. Throughout the environment. <laughs> You're mumbling. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong? Because I'm thinking and talking at the same time. He's like I'm thinking like and talking. And chewing gum. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I Magneto is always he he's always the most complex character to me. Right. Every time and all, the fucker always gets me to tear up and cry. Because he's always losing the best thing. Like, he's always losing parts of his humanity. So somebody's coming through and taking out his family, right? And then he has to lose his shit. So why does Stanley do that? Do what? I don't know why Stanley does that. I don't really care why Stanley does that. I want What's to... the, my meaning? What's the lesson you're getting from that? The lesson? The parable. What's the lesson or the... War. <laughs> you get war from I get that? war. You know, people, people are always trying to take something... From someone else mm-hmm. this is war right so war is human it's it's our, our natural state it's our human condition you know because we are always at war with nature right even though we are mm-hmm. part of nature but in order for us to survive mm-hmm. right in order for us to survive we have to work together mm-hmm. but then we can only work together in a certain amount of you know the group can only be so large before mm-hmm. we start to freak out and we say uh, I need you know now I need to battle this other group right mm-hmm. because War, meaning we end up mastering our environment and our elements, right? But then we end up fractioning, fractioning off into new groups, right? And then yet these new groups have to battle it out, right? So it's almost like this, this repeating pattern over and over and over again of evolution, right? You get evolution, right? You get creatures or you get um, um, living organisms, right? And then they have to battle for the resources, Whatever these resources are, eh, who knows? You know, they can be like, ah, we're mutants. Ah, you know, we're humans. Ah, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm a god, right? Mm -hmm. And you need this. You need to to worship me, right? Mm -hmm. But either or, they're 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 battling over someone's attention, right? And that's the resource. The resource now is human attention, right? And then you get to see, well, who is going to win? Which group is going to win? And then this is just a constant theme that I, I see in this is just yeah, the human condition is war. (laughs) <laughs> that's what you got from that. Yeah, that's just one. I got all sorts of <laughs> ideas <laughs> that that could be popping through through my head. I don't know. I mean, the the for Magneto, the the uh, his losses are so fucking tragic. I mean, they're awful. They make you want to cry, right? I did. They're horrible. Yeah. And so the lesson is, like, bad shit can happen. What are you going to do? How is it going to affect you? That's, that's what I take from... I mean, mag, magneto, magnets. Magnets either bring something closer, mm-hmm. right? They Ooh, attract yeah. or yeah. they repel. Yeah. So what choice are you going to make when bad shit happens? Are you going to repel uh, anger and, and get mad and, and fuck shit up? Are you going to use it to imbue some kind of strength within yourself, bring things to you mm-hmm. for, for comfort mm-hmm. and coping, and, and what's, the, what's the lesson there? Because I'm always seeing him with each character saying, okay, there's, this is, there's two paths you can take with this situation, with this story, with, with this plot, blah, blah, blah. 
and you know for some for some characters are going down this path it's not working hey I, I'm mystique but I don't want to be me anymore and then she's like fuck this I'm going to be me and then mm-hmm. she heals and she helps Magneto heal mm-hmm. then too because she's she's accepted herself and now she can help someone else mm. um uh, I mean, so many of the other characters. Yeah, so would you say that this this film is also about family? Yes, yeah. and it still it, it comes back down to strength together, equality together. Everyone's contributing their part for the whole. Yeah. Together, versus yeah. I have a very alone power differential, power inequality. Inequality. Versus inequality of power. Inequality of yeah, power. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I don't know. I'm torn with that equality because I don't think that everyone is equal. Right? I think that everyone is different, right? Um, and everyone should have a voice mm-hmm. or should be able to utilize their power or whatever that might be, right? But they're not equal because they all have like different abilities, right? Which that doesn't necessarily okay, yeah, mean yeah, yeah. No, equality. That, that's yeah. I guess I guess the equality I'm talking about is when we first started talking about master slave and who has power over someone else who has uh, who's got the the upper hand in mm-hmm. a relationship, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we we have those kind of interactions every day. You don't you don't see it as uh, as insidious as as a master slave or a, a as God. That was such a big word. What does insidious mean? Shitty. Evil, bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, God, these multi okay, multi syllable okay, okay, words. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. I just have to ask. I just have to ask because you know sometimes words fucking confuse me, right? <laughs> words Did you see? Confuse yeah. me all the yeah. time. Yeah, so I just said fucking because yeah, <laughs> I, everybody knows what fucking means. It's like yeah, that shit just went over my head. Oh, this was insidious. Okay, fine. Yeah. I think that's even a movie too, isn't it? Insidious. I think they made two of them. Yeah. Call the movie fucking then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, keep going on the on, on the on the Magneto. <laughs> you took a pause. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You laugh at me for pausing, it makes me want like Ah, who cares? More. It's fun. Right, so Magneto. The power of a person who lost all due to others thinking. Right? So every time, okay, I'm going to have to clean that one up. Mm -hmm. So Magneto always ends up having everything taken away from him. Because of Of, ideologies of other people mm -hmm. that are enforcing their Mm -hmm. power, dominance. Or they're trying to. Or they're, yeah. yeah, They're trying to because they have no clue as to what this person holds within. right? And Mm -hmm. then you can always see. He, he he goes off. There's he just there's such a, a go go. No, I'm gonna come back to another point later. No, 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 no. no, no. I don't want to lose this one. Go. But, uh, too late. It's already lost. Aww. Yeah. It's just like oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. no. I don't even know what to say now because you've already you've already hijacked this this whole this whole thought process. No, it's bad. okay. Don't feel bad. Right. But. I just go back to how Magneto, he's, he's one of my favorite characters in this X-Men universe because he happens to be one of the most complex characters because of all the shit that he's just gone through in his life. He'd probably be the one that I, I would like to identify with the most, mm-hmm. even though, even though um, uh, Charles, Charles was out there too. Actually, I identify with all the fucking characters. Right, which is just fun because I think we all do. You yeah. know, at one moment or the other, you know, just being at old world, new world, present world, future world. <laughs> it's like you just keep going through all these different stages, and then when you're when you're drunk, or whenever you have substances on you and things like that, you just think about it in a in a different capacities. Yeah, what were you gonna say about Magneto now? Oh no! It was more on the grander scale, just, just the 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 symbolism between uh, uh, groups that are different or singled out or 
or I don't want to use the word minority. So one of my favorite the the scene that that I wanted to bring up was when um, what's her name Moira is in the burka. Yeah. And she starts kicking ass. Yeah. And it's a very subtle, like, small thing. But again, it's homage to a group that's seen as powerless. Mm. Women mm-hmm. in burkas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have these groups that are powerless. And in these stories, they start taking back their power in certain capacities. Right? You had him in the Holocaust. Him uh, as a mutant. Mm-hmm. Um so he's constantly being the in the group that doesn't have power yeah the victims the victim yeah yeah Yeah. you can call it that yeah 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 but then the victims always end up creating their own heroes so their heroes emerge right so now okay so that's probably what the x-men are the x-men are just the victims heroes Mm mm-hmm yeah yeah and that's why you identify with each of the characters, because each of the characters kind of use something about uh, struggles that we have in everyday life. Like right. I talked about rage. How are you going to focus your rage? rage. Right? Yeah. <laughs> identity. Are you going to accept your identity mm-hmm. or are you going to feel shame for it? Mm-hmm. Um, what was another one? Uh, vulnerability. All right. Rage, acceptance, vulnerability, right? These are three. I like them. I like them. These are the themes. And then there's also the underlying theme of the of 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 the young and the mentoring and the teaching and when you at the very end she's like you're not students anymore. Oh, you're talking about when um uh, Mystique mm-hmm. becomes. I wrote down. She becomes a drill instructor. Mm-hmm. She becomes a drill mm-hmm. sergeant, and right. then she's saying, "All right, uh, it's time for you fuckers to wake up." Yeah, <laughs> kick kick the babies out of the nest. Mm-hmm. Now you now mm-hmm. you've got to. It's time to become warriors. Yeah. yeah, with the lessons that you're learning through this process, and using your abilities. So, and then with with the the Jean Grey, where she's this mentor. He's like, "You got to control this. You got to harness this." And he's trying to teach her how to control her powers. Um, and then that came that time where he's like, no, let it all out. Like, do your thing. Right. Because only you're going to figure out how to use your powers right. at that point. So he's given her tools up until this point. And that's why I talk about how a mentor is never going to have the same powers as a mentee. They can just guide. But at some point, then you just have to let people go and develop on their own. Yeah. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah, it was. It's very father figure, mentor whatever yeah yeah so back to family right yeah it is oh god when you just said that that whole father figure it just made me throw up in my mouth slightly <laughs> i kind of saw that in your <laughs> yeah. Face. yeah because because that's what now i'm thinking about paternalism and mm-hmm. that's what you see too because apocalypse was just mm-hmm. he was such a paternal fucker Right, and it's just like, dude, I want to punch you in your face right now. He wasn't a mentor. No, he would just say, "Here, I will teach you." No, he didn't even say teach you. Mm-hmm. I will unlock. Right, so he said, "I will unlock your true potential." Right, a, right. my child. I will unlock this, or right. I will unlock that. My child. Right, so this is that old world way of thinking, which makes me, you know, it makes me want to punch him right. <laughs> in his face. Right, because everybody else, all the people that you were talking about, they were doing it on their on own. On their own, that's yeah. the process. He mm-hmm. gave, he took the process away from them. No, he never gave them the ability to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's like he didn't even take it. He didn't even take it. He's like, I'm going to keep you, you children, mm-hmm. as infants for mm-hmm. the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Right, as long as you look to me as your father. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. you will forever be my children. Mm-hmm. Right, and then if you can just you can look at all this. All oh, this and as far as like belief systems, religious belief okay, systems, God. or yeah, yeah, or anything, it's like yes, Father, right? Everybody's saying Father, Father, save me, Christian Father, God. Father, protect me, right? It's like man, fuck that, dude, right? And this is why X Men has such a, a, a it, it makes me feel so, well, I just get this this explosive, somewhat like yeah, I'm gonna throw my hands up because I want to punch someone <laughs> because <laughs> because I hate when people try to 
tell other people how to live and how to act and and then how to do things and and then that's why apocalypse just you know fucking rubbed me wrong mm-hmm. it's like you big blue fucker right it's, it's the exact yeah. opposite of what mm-hmm. xavier was doing man and then he kept stealing mm-hmm. everybody's powers and that's just it even made me want to hit him more because it's like you're only strong because you stole everybody else's shit for millennial mm-hmm. and then they let it happen uh, yeah yeah so yeah all in all, how'd you rate the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was really impressed. I liked yeah. it a lot. Yeah, it was. It was a real good movie. Real good film. Lots of life, life lessons, right? But the major themes that you walk away from, that you can say that you learned from watching this film. Because we're getting ready to close it out. <laughs> uh, the, the major lesson that I learned was there's two paths you can go with any challenge. Right. And one path uh, will lead one way. <laughs> the other will lead the other way. Right. Where do, you, where do I want to go? So it's like that binary question. Yeah. Where do I want to go? What's, what's, what's the goal? Right. If I take this path, if something happens and I, I react with rage or X, Y, and Z, I'm going to go down this way. If I react with self-acceptance and growth, then I'm going to go down this path. Right. And that's what all the character development I saw was about. Nice. That's a good one. Yeah. The one major theme that I took away from this one, the one lesson that, it, and it's probably biased because this is just how I'm thinking, mm-hmm. but it's peer to peer technology, peer to peer networks, right? Network communities are the most powerful force mm-hmm. that humans people Mm -hmm. have ever created right Mm -hmm. it's what has made or created this world it's the ability to learn from each other it's the ability to work together right it's the ability of not being censored or controlled by others allows us to actually achieve fucking greatness so that was my major major lesson world huh that's the new world yeah yeah but that's also the old world which is kind of fucked because Hmm. what allowed us to break from the old world was this connection, mm-hmm. right? Of saying it, eh, screw you. I can do it on my own or we can do it together, mm-hmm. right? Eh, you know, screw mm-hmm. you. You know, we can now work together, right? Mm-hmm. So this is just the major theme that I kept seeing over and over and over. Mm-hmm. It's just communication and connecting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, this was a good review. <laughs> yeah, this was a good review. I don't know how many of these. Well, we can probably do a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah probably a lot because there's... Uh, our films, our art, <laughs> yeah, our films, our arts. <laughs> um, these these are the new stories that have so many lessons in it, and then basically that's what it is. It's it's like you watch you watch these films and you think that you're watching them for entertainment, but then you are being entertained. There is some type of joy that you're getting from it, but then there's also um, lessons that you can take from it that you can apply to your to your life. Yeah, 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 and then. Yeah, this might be might be a, a new way of just um, growing, learning, and through others, which is what we've always done. And like you said, that's what storytelling. Storytelling. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Well, I guess I'm gonna drop the mic on that note.